171. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. 
If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a one-year-old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the tor two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 116. We will read responsively of the half verse. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication. Because he has inclined his ear to me wherever I called upon him. How shall I repay the Lord? For all the good things he has done for me. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bond. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people in the courts of the Lord's house in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. I will, I will call, call upon, upon the, the name, name of, of the Lord. Lord. The second reading comes from the book of 1 Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able and turn in your hymnals to 315 and we will sing Thou Who Art the First Eucharist Didst Pray.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. And Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I've done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, Servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so I now say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. And I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love what, have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So this is our first Holy Week back in, in church uh, in the last two years. And uh, I, I know that I had any number of conversations with people that said, you know, when we got back to, into church and we were able to take communion, or they were like, I am never going to take communion for granted again. I, I had a number of conversations like that with people. You know what I did not have? I didn't have anybody saying to me, you know what, I'm really looking forward to Monday Thursday service. Like, I, that's the thing that I, I'm all about. And, and uh, I think that that's, uh, that's right, right? Uh, we are not uh, foot washers, per se, and uh, it's not uh, very clear how this works itself out. And it's a little bit weird uh, what Jesus is doing here because it doesn't translate very well for us. Like, the, this whole idea of washing somebody's feet, it just, it really does not translate well. It's kind of lost some of its, uh, some of its uh, currency, uh, most of its currency, I would say. Uh, in, in the same way that uh, this riddle ha has lost its currency. Uh, I told this riddle to my, to my son today. He, he gave me a different answer, but he, here's the riddle. Most of you know it already. Um, 
If you know it, if you don't, don't, don't shout out the answer, though. So a man and his son get in a car wreck. They, they're badly injured, and they uh, end up getting taken to, bo- uh, to different hospitals. The son gets wheeled in, wheeled into surgery. The surgeon comes in and said, I can't operate on this, on this kid. He's my son. How could that be possible? Now, when I was in second grade, that one stumped me. Like, I, I am not super old, but uh, that uh, second grade would have been like 1989, something like that, 1988, something like that. Uh, and it stumped me because uh, I had no idea what it would mean. But if you ask kids now, they get it almost immediately. And in fact, not only do they get it now, but it doesn't even work anymore. Right? It does not even work because there are multiple answers to this question now. There's only one answer to the question, but it only works in a specific time and place in America. And it says something about how we see and view women, right? But the reality is it only works there. It doesn't work anymore. Foot washing, I think, is in some ways the kind of similar. Like, we don't get what's happening here. We don't really have an understanding because it's just not practical. Like in Jesus' time, when Jesus gets down and washes feet, he's doing something very practical. We're going to do something that's ceremonial here in a minute, uh, but all of you are are wearing shoes. All of you uh, probably took a shower today or at least in the last 24 hours. Uh, That was not the case in Jesus' time. Uh, most of you wore socks and shoes here today, and uh, your feet are clean. In Jesus' day, you would be wearing sandals. The, the, the streets would be muddy or dirty, or, and it would be bad. And so you would walk in, and you would need somebody to practically uh, take care of your feet. And this is part of what's happening when Jesus says, you know, your hands and your, your head are clean, Peter. You know that. You've you just been walking around outside and got dirty. Like, you know what's up with that. So it it doesn't translate very well for us because we don't have that same kind of practical need for for us uh, anymore. And and so the reality is is that that whatever we're doing here, even when we're doing it like this, it's not the same thing. And so what what is it that's happening here? What's going on here? What what could I do? And I, I was searching around and thinking about how can I explain this or how can I really touch on this? And I don't know that there's a perfect analogy for it, but here's what I came up with. So in our class, uh, our Lenten study, we've been reading the book Cast, and several of you are here that have been in this class, so this story is already familiar to you. Uh, but one of, one of the parts, one of the pillars of Cast is purity, like uh, that you keep things separate. The upper caste does not have anything to do with the lower caste. And you saw this in the Jim Crow South with you would have black water fountains and you would have white water fountains. And, in, and it was so bad that uh, white people would not bathe or would not uh, swim, go to the same public swimming pools with uh, black people. And anytime that you would see this in the 60s, like, and you can watch videos of this, you can watch videos of People, white people losing their minds. Uh, there will be black people in a public pool and some white person will come along and pour bleach into the pool or, uh, or other things. Or if some, uh, somebody is black that gets into the pool, they will drain that pool completely of its water and then fill it back up. She tells the story, Isabel Wilkerson tells the story about Al Bright, who is the only black kid on his Little League baseball team. And, and they've literally just won their Little League championship. And uh, so to celebrate, the coaches decide they're going to take him to, uh, to go swimming. And this is in Ohio. This isn't in the Deep South. This is in Ohio. They take him uh, to the swimming pool. There's just one problem. He can't get in. So Al has to sit outside of the gate while the rest of his teammates go in and swim. And, you know, he has to look through and, and watch them. And finally, the coach is trying to make things better, say, we, is there not something that we can do? Is there not some way we can make this, you know, give this kid something? Because he, he was on the team just like everybody else. He deserves to win. So literally what they do, they make everything worse in their attempt to make everything better. They literally make everybody get out of the pool. 
Everybody get out of the pool. And then they let Al get in a little raft. And they have, and so Al is in the pool, and everybody's watching him, and there is a lifeguard pulling, a, pulling him around the, the pool. And the whole time, the lifeguard is saying, do not touch the water. You cannot touch the water. Like that, that's the kind of caste system that we lived in, in living memory of people in this room, and living memory of people who were alive. And it wasn't just in Ohio. I mean, it was here in West Virginia, too. We, uh, we had a discussion in our class about how Ro Rock Lake Pool was not integrated, about any number of pool public pools that were not integrated, that this purity culture existed here. And I don't know if I don't know if he knew about it at the time. I don't know if he, he, he uh, did this in direct response to that. Um, but Mr. Rogers, the Mr. Rogers of Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, on his show, Mr. Rogers had a black police officer on his show, and he invited Mr. Officer Clemens I think his name's Officer Clemens. Mr. Rogers is sitting. He's sitting down, uh, and he's got a, a, a wading pool in front of him. And he's sitting there, and he's got the hose with him. And, he, and it's a hot day, and he's just sitting there with them. And Officer Clemens walks up, and he, sa he says, Officer Clemens, come, come and join me in this pool. And so uh, Officer Glimmons uh, first protests, but then he's like, okay, fine. So he takes off his socks and his shoes, and he rolls up his pants, and he puts his feet in the water. Mr. Rob. And this, this is what Jesus is doing when he's washing feet, when he's washing the disciples' feet. This is this very small moment that, that has a huge impact. That like all that Mr. Rogers has done is put his feet into water with a, with a black man. And he, an entire generation saw it. An entire generation that was raised by Mr. Rogers saw it and was affected by it. And that gets at something of what is happening with Jesus washing his feet. Je Jesus is the person of status. Jesus is the rabbi. Jesus is supposed to be the upper caste. He's not supposed to be, he's not the disciple. He's not a servant. He's not supposed to be doing this. And he's shattering all of that in this moment. Touching this very deeply broken place, this hierarchical place where only certain things can happen. Only certain people can be in these certain roles. And he says, I am completely shattering that. And so what I would say about this, uh, uh, this lovely ceremony, this lovely foot washing that we're going to have in a, in a few minutes is that it's not about foot washing. And, and it may be odd enough to maybe keep it in our minds uh, what, it, what it's really about. Because what Jesus says is in the, our reading this evening is that I'm giving you a command to love each other. That's the new commandment, to love each other. That's, well, how, Jesus? How are we supposed to love each other? He says, I, I've given you this example. I've given you this example of washing each other's that, that's how you love each other. So it always reminds me of um, th this movie. There's this movie in uh, 1997, Contact. It's actually Pat, one of Pastor Melissa's favorite movies. And she made multiple references to it. But there's a scene in it where the main character, uh, Ellie Arroway, is talking to a, a pastor. And uh, he, she's this kind of... Uh, very rigid scientific person, an atheist, and she's and she's asking, demanding uh, proof for uh, for the existence of God, and, and the and the pastor says to her, "Do you love your dad?" 
your dad, did you love him? And she says, yes. And he says, prove it. Think about my own life, my own upbringing, my, my grandfather, um, part of his, who, who raised me, and, and what would I say? If somebody asked me, did I know that, I, that my grandfather loved me or that my mother loves me? I know these things, right? I know that these things are true, but how do I know that they are true? Well, in my, in my grandfather's case, I, I would I'd probably start with something like I'd say, when I was... No, I couldn't have been more than two years old. My grandfather would take me down into his basement, and he had, he collected shot glasses, but he didn't drink. He didn't drink alcohol. He collected shot glasses, but he had a cooler, and in his basement, and among all his tools and the nails and the, and the vice and all of these things, he had two seats, and in that, uh, in that space, he had a cooler that had glass bottles of Coke in it, and when I was two years old, he would take me down there, and he would pour shot glasses of Coke for me, and we would take them together. Or I would tell you that when I was 11 years old, um, he put a basketball hoop on his garage uh, door so that I could play basketball, because all I wanted to do in my whole life was play basketball. Or I would tell you that uh, he took me down to Carver Career Center and uh, found some barrels and lined them up and helped me parallel, learn to parallel park when I was 16. And, the, and, those are, and there are big things that I could say too, but it's all of these little moments that add up, that tell a story about the consistency and the kind of person that he is. And that is what Jesus is asking of us. He's saying, show me that you love each other. Show me that you love me. Show me that you love each other by washing each other's feet. By teaching each other to parallel park. The revolution does not happen with great power or great wealth or great influence. It happens one act at a time. That's what we're called to. To faithfully act in this moment. How can I serve in this moment? That's what's required of us. Not, not some great thing. Not some miraculous thing. Simply, how can I wash my brother, my sister's feet? In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. My fellow servants of our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night before his death, Jesus set an example for his disciples by washing their feet, an act of humble service. He taught that strength and growth in the life of the kingdom of God come not by power, authority, or even miracle, but by such lowly service. Therefore, I invite you who share in the royal priesthood of Christ to come forward that we may recall whose servant we are by following the example of our master. Come remembering his admonition that what will be done for us is also to be done by us to others. For a servant is not greater than his master, nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. So in, a, in a, just a minute, we're going to come up and, and do this. And Lynette and I will start. And just a, a couple of things about this. You are welcome to come up. If you do not feel comfortable, please do not feel like you have to uh, have to do this. We also have we have a foot washing station. If you would, if you would like that, if you're uncomfortable with that or don't want to do that, we also have a hand washing station here as well um, to to do this as well. 
The other thing that I will say about this is that uh, this washing, like I said in the sermon, is ceremonial. Ceremonial. This, this is not, this is, we are not uh, scrubbing, uh, scrubbing feet down or scrubbing ha hands down, right? Um, so a little bit of water over the hands, a little bit of water over the feet. You can take a towel and dry them off. You're done. Uh, and you have, you have completed uh, this aspect of it.
people for this evening are found on the insert. On this night, the Lord was handed over to sinners. Let us pray to his Father on behalf of all for whom he died, saying, God, who washed us in the blood of your Son, have mercy upon us. Clarify your church's insight into your presence in the world and enable every human being to see in our fellowship the sign of your new covenant. God, who washed us in the blood of your Son, have mercy upon us. Teach our national and local leaders the power of humility and enable them to work selflessly for the good of all. God, God who washed us in the blood of your Son, have mercy upon us. Reconcile the divided Christian churches and grant peace to nations and religious groups hostile to one another. God, who washed us in the blood of your Son, have mercy upon us. Come to the aid of the earth's starving peoples and give them their rightful share of the food you lavish on all your creatures. God, who washed us in the blood of your Son, have mercy upon us. Heal the bodies of the wounded and diseased. Heal the hearts of those betrayed by their loved ones. God, God who washed us in the blood of your Son, have mercy upon us. Forgive the sins of this people which calls on you. Let the bread we break and the cup we drink save us from evil and free us to obey your word. God, who washed us in the blood of your Son, have mercy upon us. God, our Savior, hear the prayers of your family, gather to proclaim the death of your Son until he comes. Pour forth on all humankind your blessings of life and true freedom through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Please stand to your right. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Uh, the first is our our Monday uh, Thursday collection, as well as all of uh, our loose plate collections on these special days in Lent, are going to the Ukrainian relief through the Episcopal relief uh, Episcopal relief relief, and it's going to Ukra to Ukrainian refugees. So if you would like to give to that in the loose plate or earmark it uh, in in your offering, that. Uh, that is where that will go. And just a reminder, it'll be like that tomorrow night on Good Friday. It'll also be like that on Easter Sunday. The other thing logistically that we need to talk about um, as, we, as we move through communion is that uh, what will happen is the normal things will happen or normal as we get around here at the moment with a deacon in charge, um, is we will go through communion. We will then have our communion hymn. We will come after the communion hymn. We will have our post-communion prayer. Then we will have our last hymn, and then after our last hymn, we'll have the strip, we will strip the altar. And so at that point, uh, you'll know we're stripping the altar when I take off my stole and cross, and we'll begin stripping the altar. And once the altar has been stripped, once everything has been taken off, we will process out in silence. There is no, there's no recessional hymn. We leave in silence, and anybody know the reason why we do that? Tomorrow is Good Friday, and the re and the re the reason that that we process out in silence is this like this is the triduum, which means that this Monday Thursday Good Friday Easter Sunday are part of one service. They are one service, and so 
we in, we're going to enter Good Friday in silence and, enter, and leave in silence because we'll be in the middle uh, in the second part of a three-part service uh, there. So all, all, of these, all of these services are connected. So that, that is the reason why we're going to do it. Katie. Yes, and pl please do not, uh, do not walk through AA while they're, while they're meeting. We're, we are uh, grateful to have them here, and we are uh, thankful for, for the, them, so let's be appreciative. And just go out the Narthex doors, please, as you're leaving. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? Rod. Uh, for all of you online, if you planned on attending for, uh, for Easter Sunday, Ron is saying uh, we are blooming the cross for pictures. Uh, so please bring, bring that. If you've got blooms, if you've got things that are flowering, bring them and put them, put them on the cross on Easter morning. There, we're also going to do an Easter egg hunt. That's correct, right? So bring your kids. Afterwards, there'll be an Easter egg hunt. Anything else that needs to be announced? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. service this evening continues with Holy Eucharist from the Reserve Sacrament. So we will begin on page 364 of your Book of Common Prayer with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray as Christ our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you 
with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We will now sing together, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom.